Hiya, and welcome back to Moonlight Castle. <laughs> the game that teaches us that even in the most serious moments, I cannot take a single fucking thing seriously. I did- I- I cannot take anything seriously. Yeah, welcome. It, it depends on the type of artist, and even then, I had nothing to do with this game. Anyways, let's just hop right in. And there I was, all alone, in such a big room. I wandered aimlessly through the gaps between the tables inside the canteen, moving chairs out of my way while I was at it. Now that I had no immediate tasks or responsibilities to bear, everything felt empty, or maybe it was always that way. Hiya. Though, I couldn't help feeling that I'd never have a chance to see it, as I'd been so busy just trying to feel alive, always trying to find meaning to life without any objective. Eventually, I sat down at our usual table, and without effort, I imagined our friends taking their seats around me. I wondered if they ever had to go through the same thing that I did. Was I really the only one? How were they able to manage everything in their life so perfectly? And then, in an instant, the tiny theater in my head was destroyed by a sudden, horrendous feeling. Uh, yeah, I do. It was piercing my body and giving me unreasonably- and making me unreasonably alarmed. I looked around, and there was nothing. I couldn't pinpoint exactly where it was coming from. Instinctively, I scanned the place once more in an attempt to identify the source of the strange feeling I was having, which is only growing stronger and stronger. Oh, this is normal. That is normal. Um... No, thank you. If if I need to, if I need like an asset or something, I'll just, I usually just make it myself. No, no, thank you. I appreciate it, but no, thank you. Instead, I scanned the place once more in an attempt to identify the source of the strange feeling I was having, which was only growing stronger and stronger. Yet, I found nothing, although it was coming from everywhere, in all directions, and it was overwhelming me. I couldn't understand what it was and why I was feeling it. The only thing I knew was that I was a target. My body fueled with adrenaline, I sprang from my seat and I was ready to make a run for it. Don't move. All the fur on my back stood up as I heard a voice from behind me, and it was exactly where I'd been sitting just a moment ago. My chest tightened and my breathing became heavy, yet funnily enough, I obeyed, I obeyed what the voice told me. I stopped in my tracks, turn around. Every muscle inside me was screaming. Ass bitch. Ass bitch. I'm I'm looking at the thing use block the term ass bitch. That is the thing. Every muscle inside me was screaming, telling me not to do it, yet I was too scared to listen to them rather than the voice. My whole life had always been about following orders in order to stay alive. Anyway, it was my I only it was my only survival mechanism at this point, and it always worked. Therefore, I did what the voice said, and then I saw... It was a male cheetah, presumably around my age. He was sitting on a chair that, on the chair that I was on, and his legs were spreading into the table. His claws were out, and his eyes were glaring right into mine. I could sense an anger seeping through his teeth, even if it appeared he was trying to look calm and collected. If anyone thought Dylan was scary, then they'd surely never met this cheetah. Just the feline's presence alone was absolutely horrifying to me. Now sit! He knocked over a nearby chair with his foot, and it seemed he expected me to pick it up and sit on it. I was frozen, every inch of my body was kept in place, and I was conflicted, worried, and panicked, all beyond belief. I SAID SIT! He shouted loud and clear, and it was that moment that I immediately followed his instruction, although I was reluctant. All I could think about at that moment was that I wished that Ryan would come to save me. Heh! <laughs> Finally! I get to see you up close, Kaysen. I swallowed. He knew my surname which suggested that he either studied me beforehand or stalked me. What was I supposed to do? How was I supposed to get out of this situation? Why was this happening? Did I do something? There were so many questions swarming my head, and they were all hitting the walls, bouncing everywhere inside it. I couldn't think straight, as this had never happened to me before. I was merely a college student. Why would anyone stalk me? Cat got your tongue. 
You better get it back, because I need it. Are you going to hurt me? Maybe. It depends on you. I must have done something to someone then, but... What? I didn't remember doing anything. I don't even know the guy. I'll be real with you, Kaysen. I hate your guts. A lot. And that's probably why you managed to feel my presence. I could trash you with my paws right here, right now. Then boss would probably make me pay for that. Boss? So this guy wasn't alone? Shit, this was bad. How did I end up here? I just wanted to get Liam's nose. What you've done to him is absolutely unforgivable, and I've decided that I'll make you pay. Him? Huh? Could it be? You're one clever fucker, aren't you? Think you could get away with that? Hell no, you won't! Or I could say anything, he threw himself at me, and I was basically at his mercy. He was so agile, moving fast like a snake, and he was completely overpowering me, standing behind myself. I tried to struggle, but I'd always been awful at fighting back. His limbs were wrapped around me, and the, sharp t and the tips of his sharp claws were rubbing against my neck. Now... Let's take a walk through the school. One funny movement and I'll cut it open, you got that? His claws were pressing my skin and so were his fingers. Thought I'd faint on the spot. I wanted to cry for help, but nothing came. Came out. The fear was suppressing everything in me. You'd better move. If it isn't you, then your friend will be it. He snickered right into my ear. It was a laughter that would probably haunt me in my dreams for a long time. Ryan Giles. Right? Ryan, but he was supposed to save me! I gave in to the cheetah's demand and began walking with him away from the canteen. Moving along the hallway, I tried my best not to appear like I was in danger. The cheetah hadn't shared much information with me, and I figured that I was being led somewhere, probably outside. Upstairs! Or not. Well, that alone crossed, crossed out quite a few options, and I managed to utter a question. <laughs> Where are we going? The cheetah didn't reply, however, I could kind of guess what was going on now. Was this what he meant when he said that we lived in two different worlds? I was crazy. It was crazy. Absolutely crazy. Also, it was kind of curious how there was no one in the hallways. I was lost for words. Was I just unlucky today? And where was Ryan? Shouldn't I have come across him by now? The cheetah let go of me as we reached our destination. We were standing in front of an entrance, and I was given a period of temporary relief as his claws were no longer on my neck. I gave it a touch to confirm that everything was, indeed, fine. OPEN THE DAMN DOOR! He pushed me with his foot right into the door, and I was forced to grab its handle, or else the door could have pushed itself open. And I'd have landed on the floor. JESUS OKAY, I'M DOING IT! Entering the library, I felt reassured, as there were people, students moving around to check books and read sh- to check shelves and read books. My eyes were flickering back and forth between the people in the room and the cheetah behind me. Maybe there was an idea worth trying. Go ahead. Try me. I couldn't bear the thought of turning my head to fully face him, so I could only imagine how he looked when he said that. It seemed he was one step ahead of me, and my simple trick wouldn't be enough to outsmart him. Up another floor, Kaysen! I wish I'd listened to Ryan this morning. I could have been anywhere but here. I stared at the steps. The staircase was probably the last thing standing between me and his boss. Slowly, I ascended them. It perplexed me once I'd reached the top, as I was expecting to see a completely different person rather than the one I saw. Hang on. There you are. I've been waiting. <laughs> Liam? Yeah, yeah, I know. I'll just wait out your shock. Not even a moment had passed and the bastard was already messing around with my emotions. The fuck was all this? Blinks was looking in my direction, but it seemed he was more staring at the person behind me. Give him some space, Marcus. He's not running away. It's Mark to you, Pratt. The cheetah grunted and moved to the side, and he was no longer behind me. For the first time in minutes, I was able to breathe freely. What was all this about? You just assaulted and kidnapped me! Yo, chill! I didn't! He did! Liam pointed a finger at Mark and I just frowned. There was no way that the Lynx could avoid accountability. <laughs> You're not innocent! Let's just say I gave him a push. I only wanted you here, and his methods were unknown to me. Bullshit! You know, I wouldn't have to do it if you didn't send Ryan in your place and made my life harder. Where is he? What did you do to him? Relax. He's fine. He took the stuff that you wanted to borrow, and he left a while ago. He did what? That's impossible. I would have... Heard from him, is that it? 
Oh, Joel, my dear friend, you're so naive. I'll give you a freebie. Take it as a way I'm saying sorry for the rough treatment you got. Think about it, and you'll notice the inconsistency in his behavior. There's a hole there, a big empty space in his timeline, something he claims to have done, but it just doesn't exist. What does he actually do when you're not looking? What's he hiding away from you? Stop! There's no way that what you're saying is true. My phone began to ring itself and interrupt our conversation. It was Ryan. I knew it. He was looking for me, but why was he calling me so late? I looked at Liam, and once he gave me a nod of approval, I answered the phone. Hey, Joel, I got your notes. Actually, it's a recording of the entire lesson, which should be even better, right? That's... great. You sound tired. Where are you now? I just got to the canteen, but you aren't here. Just now? Yeah. Liam wasted so much of my time, it was unbelievable. I see... Are you coming here soon? Everyone else should be coming, too. Y yeah, I'll be there in a bit. I... I ended the call, and the hand that was holding the phone went a little limp. I hated to admit it, but Liam was right. I couldn't look at him, and I hated how he was forcing me to see it. It felt as if I was on my own again, in this lonely world. You're welcome. Screw him, I thought, but I really wanted to say it out loud, right in his face. However, I just couldn't. There just wasn't anybody out there that I could rely on, was there? Was I doomed to always feel isolated? A realization hit me and it was pushing me away from the present. It had become the focus of my mind. The hell's going on here? I heard Dylan's voice from a distance and it kind of snapped me back from a state of trauma, though only partially. It was like I was back to reality and wasn't at the same time. Joel? It seemed the reptile's pacing was increasing and quickly, Crocodile was making his way to me. He tapped me on the face a few times and he was trying to hold me up, which made me realize that I'd been on the floor. Just let go of me. He did, as soon as he heard me, and then I... I felt it again, seeping anger. It was boiling, swelling from within. However, this time, I could tell that it wasn't from Mark, although it was similar, and that I wasn't part of the target. Oh, I worried for a second that your stupid stunt yesterday had ruined my chance to investigate. Liam stepped forward, and he was looking as chaotic as his usual self. Mark? Come here for a second. Immediately, the cheetah answered Dylan's call and placed himself next to me. I'm here, boss! I did well, didn't I? Dylan cracked his own neck and knuckles, and then... Without warning, he released all the anger that was built. The reptile launched a full-blown punch right in the cheetah's face and sent the tawny guy flying. It was enough to give Liam a clue about what was going on. Thinks was flinching and trying to back away. However, before he could, his tail was grabbed by the crocodile and he was being pulled toward the reptile. Hey, hey I'm your hire, remember? His speech was slurred. It seemed he was drenched in fear as he, saw, as he foresaw a similar fate upon himself. You can't do this. You won't see a single penny if the thorough exploration doesn't happen. I don't fucking care! Dylan glared briefly into Liam's eyes before landing a headbutt on the lynx's face. Hiya. There wasn't much noise out of the lynx even though he was bleeding. It must have been hard, as it left a bruise even on the crocodile's head. That's enough! Don't do anything further! I knew that the crocodile would keep going if I didn't stop him. He was just mad. Too mad right now. He kept staring at the lynx, who was now on the floor, for a little while before the reptile huffed and looked away. Liam promptly, yet slowly, crawled away from Dylan. Reptile then took a chair from a nearby table and placed me on it. Rust, I have some business to take care of. Boss, what was that for? Mark was holding his nose with both hands and making a lot of noise. What the fuck happened? Whatever happened, Liam deserved it. <laughs> yeah, slay. Dylan fucking slayed. He didn't just... Sl Dylan ate and left no crumbs. Hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink something real quick. He ate... Dylan fucking ate. Girl, he's serving so hard. Okay, I want to say something, but I don't want to say it, so I'm going to type it. Let me, let me type it real quick. And I'm going to keep it around. Hang on, let me, let me, let me type it real quick. And there we go. There's a little thing that I'm wanting to say, but not actually going to say. Because I am. Mark was holding his nose with both hands and making a lot of noise. 
Shut your trap, we're in a library. I was only trying to help you. The cheetah then pointed at me. Aren't you mad at him? I'm not. You can't lie to me, boss. I've been upset since you came back. You're a fool. Liam has completely manipulated you. Get lost. Now. But. It's an order. No. Reluctantly, the tawny feline disappeared behind one of the many bookshelves around us. Dylan took another look at me and then let out a sigh. What do I do with you? This is the first time in my entire fucking life that I feel this lost. I'd warned you, hadn't I? You don't even know anything. You have no idea what you're getting yourself into. What do you want? Do you want me to beg? Is that it? What does it take to keep you away? I want a proper explanation. You can't expect me to leave you. I don't do that. That's the attitude I don't understand. When more I came, people were treated as tools. All of us were. Cooperation happened only because it was necessary. And the moment one became useless, they were thrown on the street to die like a rat. I don't have anything to offer you. That's what you think. Am I also just another tool to you then? Yes. I see. However, I don't believe it. I couldn't accept that, and it hurt to hear it. You'd be right to doubt his words. Liam stood up and dragged himself back to our table. His forehead was soaked in crimson, and it probably needed medical attention. Go and clean yourself. You've spat enough poison. I'm not letting you interfere. What? Think traumatizing Joel and forced me to reveal my life is the answer? Have you lost your mind? You're with me, and he's been avoiding you. And I need him, so I had to take matters into my own hands. For fuck's sake, that's what I wanted him to do. If he steps out, everyone else is going to leave too, don't you understand? We can go alone, just the two of us. Our chances would reduce drastically. It'd make the expedition too risky. Dylan shrugged quite violently and turned to face me. Can you walk? I'm going to tell you one last time. Go home and forget about this. Oh, I don't know. I also feel like you're important in some way. I, I don't know why. I'm just getting that vibe. Hang on. I'm, I'm going to do a thing. Hang on. Let me just... Doing a thing real quick because I'm curious about something. I should probably get rid of that. Eh. Okay. That answered that question. Go home and forget about this. I want to know everything! No leaving after what they did! It seemed Dylan didn't like the idea. However, soon afterward, his expression changed. It was as if he thought that he could use what I wanted against him. Okay, question for everyone. If you were stuck in a room with one of these characters for 24 hours and no sex isn't on the table. Here's a catch. There's no food, water, no phones, only a gun with a single bullet in the chamber. Who would you pick and why? Reminder sex isn't on the table, cats. I would just give up right then and there. I'm I'm sorry. I I I would. Like Like RIP play this song at my funeral. Sort of shit. <laughs> you know what? Fine. I'm done circling around. Have fun. What do you want to know? Who's Mark and why does he call you boss? Back in the day, I used to lead a gang of bikers across the street of my area. Some shit went down and he's the only one left. Did he really have to go that far to bring me here? You're just weak. If you didn't want to do what he said, all you had to do was beat his ass. I'd rather not solve everything with violence. Suit yourself. Not everyone can be convincing with mere words. Is that why you threw me on the ground yesterday? Yes. 
For your own sake, I wanted you to stay away from me. Can't decide for me. And neither can you. I'm not giving you a choice. You aren't safe around me. The closer you stay, the more difficult your life becomes. Why? What have you done? I've done lots of things. Bad things. Everything that paid well, I did all of them. It wasn't like I had a choice. It was do or die, and I needed to survive. You could still have the luxury of choosing the kind of l you still have the luxury of choosing the kind of life you want to live. Don't waste it here. Are you done parent parenting me? I don't think I asked you to do that. And I'm still waiting for the reasons I shouldn't be around you. The reptile grinned. To him, it must have been like a dare. Drugs, assault, burglary, you name it. For the right price, I've done all of them. Okay, stop. That's a little too much. Not to mention, murder. Fuck, are you serious right now? You did what? I've killed a man. I'm a murderer. How? Why? Doesn't matter. I've taken a life. That should be enough to keep you away from me. Damn it, Dylan, you weren't supposed to say that. You knew. How can all of you be so casual about this? You don't understand shit. Anyway. Of course not, I fucking don't. Stop, boss, this isn't fair. I can't hear you say this. Still here? I told you to disappear. I'm still breathing today because you chose to kill. Well, then anyone paint a wrong image of you, not even yourself. You have no idea how much it pisses me off to hear people talk about stuff they don't understand. I know a thing or two about you. I can see that you're looking after his butt. You like this dog, don't you, boss? Then why don't you just let him do whatever the fuck he wants? Oh, sure. What do you want, Joel? There wasn't a word coming out of my mouth. It was just plain impossible for me to say anything. He'd succeeded big time in making me afraid of him. There was no going back, as he'd make sure that there was no escape route. I felt nauseous, and I only had brief intervals of lucidity. I had no clues about how to keep it together. My heart was pounding. <laughs> yeah, sure, let me just... Damn it, I don't have the console, so I can't. I'm sorry, I can't. I can't, and I'm sad now. It was racing so fast that I could hear it echo throughout my body, and it was throbbing hard in my brain. It was so hard, so painful. Out of context! And then everything vanished. It was all darkness. I felt nothing. I saw nothing. I thought nothing. It seemed I'd found peace. What I'd been seeking for a long time. But was it really the answer? If it was, then why do I feel unsatisfied? But Dylan was doing it on purpose, wasn't he? He was trying to look as bad as possible so that he'd get me into a meltdown. Of course, that was it. It, it was probably his plan all along. Liam had implied that if they were to lose me, a domino effect would occur. So, was he trying to save me? Not even Ryan did, so why would he? I was mad. I had many reasons to be mad. However, for now, I refused to let it end this way. It was infuriating enough that I was dealt a losing hand. I had been stuck with it since I was born. I refused to shut down. I refused to stop. I refused to end it here. I had to move. My body needed to move. I heard voices. It was working. I was coming back. Now I just had to push harder and force my, body, force my body to obey me. Hmm? Shit! You really went too far there. Now I'll just carry him to the infirmary. This answer does plenty. What am I supposed to say to the others now? This is so fucked up. I'm fucked up. What? Don't you like the bed you've just made? Now all you have to do is lie in it. I began coughing loudly and painfully as I tried to push myself back into consciousness. Mark, get me some water. On it. But Joel didn't succumb. Oh, shit! A fucking bug. Hang on, I'll be right back. There's a fucking bug. I'll be right back. Gotta go grab something. I'll fucking be right back. That scared the shit out of me. 
you fuck me to pray to your God. Because I'm here and I got a paper towel and I'm going to... You going to meet Jesus. Oh, thank you for the raid, Axel. Here's a sting bug. Oh, son of a bitch. I hit the enter key. It was on my enter key. Fuck bugs, hole blast. Yeah. Now it's dead and in the trash can. I know, they fucking suck. Mark, get me some water. On it. Do you regret it? As I said that, I could feel my body was resisting the urge to break apart. There wasn't much time before I'd go down again. Answer me, asshole! Cats, you can't say shit. Because you're trying to get me to eat one. You can't say shit. I remember back when I was still living with Sam. Back when I was still living with Sam. A bug, a stink bug was there. And I flipped the fuck out. Your exact words were, eat it, LMAO. Those were your exact fucking words. You can't say shit. Although I do appreciate your words, they're hilarious. <laughs> your words are truly entertaining. You, you have the soul of a poet. You have the soul of a poet, cats. We love you. Answer me, asshole! <laughs> I don't- I try not to hold grudges. I- I try not to hold grudges. It's a yes or no question! I coughed again. My throat was dry and sore, and my mouth felt like it was holding all the sand of a desert. I felt a liquid streaming down my face and another coming out of my mouth, and I knew that neither was water. Don't stop! Lynx's voice was penetrating my skull, and it was full of unnecessary panic. I brought water! Dylan was about to help me drink, but Liam pushed the bottle out of his hand and replaced it with another one. Hurry, give it to him before the damage is permanent! Dylan's expression darkened as the reptile hurriedly shoved in my mouth whatever he was given. I was searching my body was paralyzed, so I just drank all of it without much thought or giving it a fight. As soon as I finished, my eyes shot open. It felt like someone had injected me with life. Whatever was happening a moment ago, it was gone, as if I'd never happened. As if it never happened. There was a surge of energy, and my strength came back from nowhere. I gasped and breathed like I'd never breathed before. It was like coming up to the surface from underwater. What was that? My vision was still blurry. Nothing was making any damn sense. It was all bullshit after bullshit. This must have been one of my worst episodes yet. I assumed that he has yet to awaken. It seemed Liam was referring to me, but I was too busy to react, trying to breathe. Though, truth is that he was suppressing his powers, subconsciously, and that can cause a lot of issues. On top of that, he'd misused them just now, which caused recoil so hard that it could have killed him. The fuck is this all about? If I had to take a wild guess, I think it was severing the connection between him and his feelings. The blessed water that I gave him stopped the process and restored a portion of energy that was wasted. To me, the Lynx was speaking pretty much another language right now. Um, thanks? What a crazy motherfucker that you are! Now that I was feeling only exhausted, which was... Now I was feeling only exhausted, which was kind of an improvement. I do, by the way. Huh? Your question. If I could go back, many things today would be different, but no one can ever go back. They must carry their mistakes with them until the day they die. I see. I was relieved now, and I wondered if that was appropriate. I thought that I wouldn't need to say anything more for a while, but my phone was ringing, and that reminded me of the time. We were insanely late, weren't we? Will you carry me? Only if you aren't getting pleasure from it. I fucking wish. And a syringe of some kind of substance, and you had to be in that room for 72 hours. Who would you pick? And again, why? Hmm. To answer that question, I would pick Thanatos, so that I would pick Thanatos from Password. So that he could knock me the fuck out for the 72 hours. I fucking wish. The only thing and the only thing any of you people have given me today is pain. And you look and you took it like a champ. Don't say it like that. I hate it. Can we talk?
talk more later. Hopefully just me and you. Yes, I'm not a huge fan of surprises either. I hadn't decided yet what my plan was going to be, but if what I learned today was true, then everything was definitely about to change. It all depend on Dylan. He had to come clean with me about the whole story, otherwise I wouldn't be able to decide anything. Dylan carried me toward the exit, and Liam was sighing nonstop as he followed us. I clung onto Dylan's neck so that I had a little more room to rest my body on. You've ruined everything. Fuck around and find out. I was tired and their words were flying over my ears. I could only hear them, but I wasn't really following their conversation. A couple of minutes went by and we'd arrived in the canteen. We looked at our table from a distance and surely everyone was already there. As we approached the table, everyone stood up from their seats and their emotions were ranging from surprise to concern and anger. Ryan was charging toward us and I knew how bad this must have looked. Before anything could escalate, I forced words out of my mouth. I fainted on my way to the canteen. Sorry I was taking so long. Shit, I told you not to move too much! There wasn't exactly an option to share with them from what I was told. Those details would totally make the group fall apart. Looking at Dylan's face, I could tell that he was expecting me to tell them and Liam was shaking like a leaf. Liam is freaking the fuck out. Wait, 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 wait. Let me reread that. Let me reread that. Reread that. No phones. You didn't say anything about laptops. I'd have my laptop with me and I'd fucking... And I'd fucking watch... He ran... I'd fucking play Omori the entire time. I'd play Omori the entire fucking time on my laptop. Because you didn't say shit about laptops. You didn't say shit about laptops. Saya created a Saya-shaped hole in the wall. Ha <laughs> ha! For once, I had the power. If I, so cho if I so chose, I could ruin everything that they'd worked so hard for. Blake, please prepare some warm tea for Joel. It should help him with the fatigue. No battery extension cords, so I can't charge the laptop. Then I just charge it beforehand. On it. Aren't you hungry? You haven't had anything to eat today. He was starving too? God damn! I hated how they were giving me too much attention. What, did they think I was a child? Give him some space. Don't you see? Don't you guys see how overwhelmed he looks? We'll be right back then. Thank goodness that Russell exited. Existed. Thank goodness that he existed. Nobody could read minds like he could. Could he? He was probably aware of my lies then. Well, that wasn't good, was it? What was this weird feeling? Why was I so sure that he could understand me? We barely even talked. The more you use, the more you use it, the worse you're going to feel. Liam was whispering in my ear and my eyes widened at what he'd said. Was I aware of Russell for a different reason? What was going on? Ugh. Why did my head become so heavy all of a sudden? I took a deep breath. No more thinking for now. There you go. Be careful though, it's hot. Blake came back with a fuming cup, and Ryan also returned with a bunch of sandwiches from a nearby vending machine. Aren't these too many? I don't know what kind of stuffing you'd like, so I brought a variety! You could have asked me. I can eat some too. That was the main reason, wasn't it? It just feels rude to watch you eat alone since we've all finished, that's all. That's some mental gymnastics right there. What are you, what are you guys trying to gang up on me for? I'm just trying to be nice. I wish that they'd stop bickering and hand me a sandwich already. Gimme, gimme. Though, thankfully, Clyde interrupted their conversation by covering my forehead with his hand, probably to check my temperature. It's a good thing that you aren't running a fever. However, please look after yourself more. You may not be as lucky next time. I'm sorry. Then we began eating, and the food completely brought life back to me. My body must have waited too long for one of its essential needs. Mmm! Feels much better now! Holy shit! I'm glad to hear that. I was so scared when I saw you walking like a zombie. Anything was that compared to the news! Liam cleared his throat. It seemed he was preparing to get everyone's attention. Now that Joel has recovered somewhat, shall we begin our discussion regarding the castle? It seemed you wanted to get it out of the way before I could ruin it. What I'm about to say is the truth in its entirety. If you have a faint heart, not necessarily Patrice, this is time to step out. Am I not even allowed to internally scream? 
As long as you're not going to disrupt my explanation, I don't care. We can give you a short, more friendly version later, are you sure? I want to hear regrets later. The castle we visited yesterday was a physical embodiment of a curse. I could feel an evil presence lurking behind those walls. It allowed me to follow me the entire night, never taking their eyes off me, but never acting upon it. Yo, what the fuck? Who is stalking you? I don't know. Did any of you feel something similar? We all looked at each other. Concerned glances were shared. Nobody spoke up, but the answer came forward on its own. I wonder why it didn't do anything. Isn't it a good thing? No, it isn't. I didn't get the chance to do my job. The curse is... The curse welcomed us in and nothing happened. That's so strange. That's because we visited an abandoned castle, Liam. There is no curse. I watched Patrice shaking like a leaf on his seat. Barely said anything and he was already a goner. True, this is some crazy horror movie plot, right? I'll never believe that. Just because you didn't see it doesn't mean I'm lying. The castle lens is invisible. The curse decides who is allowed inside, you hear me? Let's pretend you're right for a moment. I don't appreciate being put into a dangerous situation such as this without my consent. It doesn't matter, you're fine. I just needed you to grant me that permission to enter the castle, do my job, and get out. Who is it? Do you know that at least? Nope. The castle went silent yesterday. It's I can invest to drink shit. Water. It's time to drink water. It's time to drink water. Ooh. It's time to drink water. I can safely cross my name off by cross my name because I visited the campsite alone and couldn't find it. You basically used us to find this place. You mentioned that it's your job, what does that mean? I'm a medium, Joel. I get paid to get rid of weird supernatural bullshit such as this. Russell snorted, causing Liam to grow upset. Are you claiming to be a ghost hunter? I wish my job would be that simple. Being a ghost or two doesn't remove the curse. It takes way more to clear up a place as big as that. Liam picked up the bag he brought along and brought along and opened it in front of us. Holy shit! We could see a variety of weapons, weird papers, bows, bottles that contained a shining liquid, and strange accessories. This doesn't look like a job anymore! Hang on. I'm trying to get comfortable. It's some basic equipment. I tend to change stuff around after figuring out the type of curse I'm dealing with. Dude, this shit is bad! Really, really bad! Is it? It is when people enter the castle and disappear, never to be seen again. What's your motive? I can't imagine you being a hero. When you work, when your work can cost your life, the pay is really good, you know. He does have the vibe of being a materialistic person. You guys know I like the occult. Is it really so far fetched for me to get a job in this field? The fact that you can have a job like that at all is weird, Liam. There's another reason, the real one. Which is. We're listening. Liam sighed. He didn't seem willing to share that one as easily as the rest. I've lost contact with my sister three years ago and recently managed to trace back her last known movements to this castle. The same one we explored yesterday. Round your neck as a shock collar. Get close to a person. Get shocked. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. What I would say to that... I'm going to keep my fucking mouth shut. I'm going to keep it shut. The same one we explored yesterday. I guess that explains why you wanted, wanted to find it so badly. <sighs> I want to find her first, then I'll destroy this castle before I can claim more victims. You have always had to trust my gut feeling. This is crazy. You were literally the last person I expected to agree. Just be quiet on your seat. You told us your story. What do you want from us? Nothing. We want nothing. Nothing. We want nothing to lose. Get the police in I don't think he needs to tell you why this isn't going to why that isn't going to work. Honestly, I can do this just fine with Dylan, but you wanted to know, so here it is. Are we going back in here to back in there tonight? Yes, I will. If we were to join, can you guarantee our safety? I don't think I can. Look in your eyes tells me that you don't, still don't believe me. It's a lot to take in. Please understand that it's not easy to believe your story. This is your last call. Are you coming with me tonight or not? Should we help him? Oh. Wow. I'ma say no. 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 I'm hitting no. Why can't why can't I choose no? Like like hang on. I'm I'm turning I'm turning on the webcam. I'm gonna turn on the webcam. Give me a minute. I'm I'm turning on the webcam. Like like You can you can see Right here, like let me let me grab my mouse. You can see right here, my cursor is on 
No. And you can see my mouse. I'm 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 clicking it. Yeah, I know. I know it's not a choice. I'm just trying to be funny and I'm failing miserably. No isn't an option. Yeah, I know. The illusion of choice. The whole it's a whole game development thing. It's a whole storytelling game dev thing. It's weird as fuck, but it, it also makes a lot of sense. Liam sounded sincere, to me at least. I'll never agree with his methods, but if the end goal is good, then... Fine, I'll help. Dylan physically recoiled when he heard my answer while Liam's face brightened. You're shitting me! I'm not done with you yet, but for now I'll play along. I can leave at any moment, right? There's something I've realized today is that I'm more than just a coward. I'm also incredibly selfish, yep. I was starving for it. And I never realized I needed it until now. I'm making the rules now. I'm starting to think you might be a masochist. Cats don't. Shut up already. Our little quarrel distracted me from the actual conversation happening in front of us, but as far as I could see, Liam nailed it. What a disaster. You guys shouldn't entertain his crazy ideas. Are you coming or not? Everyone else agreed. I mean, not Patrice, but I figured. I looked around and noticed the tiger was missing. Did he run away? Dylan poked my shoulder and sent to me underneath the table. Patrice was absolutely terrified. He temporarily regained lucidity to wave at me and then resumed shivering. Wow. Fine, I don't like the idea of leaving Clyde in your hands. Hey, I'm not in anyone's hands. I'm too big for that. I saw half our group standing up. Dylan included, and I assumed we were parting ways. Clyde's helping me with some pay helping with some payment. I see. Do what you have to do. Make sure you actually answer my messages. I won't miss them. They all left, and I sat there with Ryan, Patrice, and Russell. I'm going home. I didn't want to be rude or anything. I'm sure that if my circumstances were different, I would have stayed. Ryan seemed capable of handling the situation alone, and I needed to decide what to do next. We're gonna go to bed. Ah! Wait! He was torn on who deserved his attention more, forcing Russell to intervene. I'll handle this for you. I wanted to have a word with our friend, so this is convenient for me. Okay, then I'll leave him to you. Don't be too harsh. Patrice needs time and patience. I was still in ear range, but that was the last thing I heard as I left the cafeteria. Ryan quickly caught up with me, took a moment to catch his breath, and resumed walking by me. So, aren't you going to tell me what happened? I wasn't feeling well. What else is there to say? You know what I'm talking about. Dylan carried you in quite the shock when you made a point of avoiding him. I haven't decided if I'm forgiving, if I'm forgiving him yet. Something's on your mind. Yeah, your face looks so serious and conflicted. Wh what do you know? Hey, no need to get it so upset over it. Ryan. Yes. Is there something you haven't told me? I'll be completely honest with you. You have been acting differently. Are you hiding something from me? You get one chance. Don't stare at me like that. It's hard to answer you. I stopped in my tracks, hoping that maybe he was going to redeem himself. You're not denying it. I mean, well, you're not completely wrong. It's nothing bad, I swear. Anything worth to be... It's nothing bad, I swear. Anything to be worth to be worried about. So you've decided not to tell me. I resumed walking, and the moment he tried chasing me, I snapped at him. No! Stay there! I'm leaving! Alone! Hypocrite! Ryan made me believe my whole life that the world wasn't shit. That if you dig enough, someone out there will care. Lies. I never stopped feeling lonely. His presence did feel reassuring, but that sensation stayed. I'm starting to understand why. Hand suddenly grabbed mine from behind, pulling me backwards when I wasn't expecting it. Don't go. I'll tell you. Will you? Yeah, it may not make sense to you, but losing our relationship over it would kill me. Fine. You're getting a second chance. Deep down, I'm still a stupid... I'm still a stupid softy who can't stand his ground at all. We returned to his car now, just the two of us. Ryan was staring down at his feet, toying with his thumbs, and I waited for him to begin. This is so embarrassing. Ryan unlocked his trunk with a lever hiding underneath his seat. This is the first reason. Take a look. He moved around and found something big wrapped in a white cloth that I quickly recognized upon touch. A guitar? Ah, uh, yes, I'm learning how to make music. Ryan, I knew I loved you for a reason. I knew I loved you for a fucking reason. I was confused. 
This wasn't what I anticipated. Why wouldn't you tell me? Ryan's face got redder and redder after my question, and eventually I pieced things together. No way. Compose a song for Joel. Something special that truly matters for him. Something only him can understand. Songs carry messages, don't they? That's how they become unforgettable. It's sweet. I felt warm, my chest tingling, but... I can't believe I just said that. I'm going to explode! I closed the trunk and walked back to my seat. He was sweating bullets and using his shirt to ventilate some air through. That explains a few things, like the three-hour gap. A good opportunity to practice, true. Because kids love musicians. Now, nah, I just love musicians. Someone from the group had to be a musician. Yes! Notice I'm attracted to the musicians. Except Keisuke, because he scares the shit out of me. Good opportunity to practice, true. It's not the full story, though. Yeah, the good part is over. It's about my degree. I'm not performing well. I'm also skipping lessons that professors have been reaching out multiple times now. We could study together, no? We don't study the same things, do we? Lately, I've been losing interest, but I don't see an alternative. There's nothing else for me out there. Working with my uncle was supposed to be temporary, but I might be stuck there. I feel stressed, wondering if I should drop out. I refuse to ask what was on my mind. Chances were he'd say yes. Must be hard getting to me. Must be getting to me because I'm hallucinating, too. What? Yeah, I hear things. It freaks me out. I need to put myself together. He wasn't lying. I knew that for certain. He needed help. This wasn't working for him anymore. You know what I'm going to say? That I'm losing my mind? No, if anything, who isn't? We're all falling apart. You've got to decide. You're standing in the middle of everything, and that's the worst place for you to be in. Leave. Work your way to a better job by learning more about your uncle's ways. Stay and find your motivation again. Consider changing your courses. Spend time with me as I teach you how to study. <laughs> the second option might not be so bad. Think about it, okay? I'm here to help you. Sorry for keeping it to myself. I was afraid of adding more problems to you. Ridiculous. My problems and my friends have two completely different weights. I'll never be bothered by someone asking for help. That stays true for Ryan, too. Stupid. What? You clearly need to hear your name, otherwise it doesn't get in your brain. I yawned again. I really wanted to get back to my apartment now. Thanks. I'll get you home now. That'd be nice, I admit. I took my phone out of my pocket and texted Dylan. Come to my house in an hour or two. I don't think I need to tell you where I live. Your friends seem to know plenty already. I was laying on my bed doing nothing. My eyes were glued to the ceiling, hyper-fixated on a random spot on the wall. My feelings were still messy and unresolved. I was supposed to study now to absorb more knowledge and spit out when it's convenient. I did not have enough strength to get out of bed and commit, but I had to. Nobody would do it for me. I thought about today, about Ryan, Dylan, Liam, and that stupid castle. Still couldn't believe the lengths that the crocodile went to just to get me to quit. He yelled, threatened, and even hurt me multiple times just to avoid directly asking me not to come. I have three app updates available. Fuck off, Creative Cloud. Dylan was doing... Yeah. Dylan was doing his worst to make sure I'd leave him and make the same disgusted look everyone else gave him. I probably wouldn't have given up with the normal approach. That didn't justify it. But what was I going to do now? I felt like I was in too deep to change my mind. This castle was serious business. I believed everyone there got that feeling, regardless of Liam's lying tendencies. I was hoping that me agreeing to this rescue mission wouldn't pressure people into following us. I sighed, knowing that was exactly what happened with Ryan and Blake. They were strong, though. I wanted to believe they would handle it just fine. I needed more intel. I wanted to be useful. I wanted to make sure everyone stays safe. I needed to get as much information as I could from Dylan. He was planning to visit. We would talk about it and other things, too. Grabbed some papers and created a small list for myself with things I wanted to ask him about. Otherwise, I figured our discussion would derail and I'd lose the opportunity to get everything there was to know about this castle. This was enough, I thought. Dylan have, didn't have the most patience, so I had a feeling not every question would receive an answer today. Then I heard a knocking on my door. I didn't bother asking who it was and reached for the handle. It's me. He said that right as I was about to open the door. You should say your name, not me. Same thing. It's early as hell. But we're going to leave off here tonight. My laptop is throwing a hissy fit right now. I'm sorry, my laptop is throwing a hissy fit right now. 
frequently going below 30 FPS. My laptop really said Dylan stinks. My laptop is throwing a huge fit right now. So I gotta stop. And just turn my computer off and turn it back on. Because fucking windows. Anyways. Stay safe. Have a good night. And I will see you all tomorrow.